Hey guys, this is Eric with InHouse Solutions coming back with video number five in the 3D Lay Tool series. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we would create an assembly with multiple cutting definitions. So we have inserts on the left and right for the left and right spindle and also inserts above and below each other that we would use a Y axis offset for. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the Lathe Tool Manager and I'm going to right click up here and choose Create 3D Tool. I'll give this tool a name. And now I'll go down to the next page. So here I'm going to choose Define a Component. The first component I'm going to define is the locator, like the block that all the holders attach to. So I'm going to define this as an adapter. And if I wanted to, I could go click here and then define each component individually. That way I have them all separated, separated in the library. And then I could hot swap them around like we did in the second video. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to define them as just the assembly, just to streamline things a little bit. So first component is the adapter here or the locator. And now I want to go down to the machine side connection. The uh, machine side connection plane is pretty simple. It's just this back plane right here. And I'll press enter to confirm. Now the workpiece side connection, we can actually define multiple of these. So I'm going to click on this plus to add a workpiece side connection. And then I'll select the plane. And I'm going to do this top left connection first. So you notice when I selected that, it rotated the whole locator around 180 degrees. So you can see I had put this text here top just to help with the orientation. So what I want to do here is this gnomon, notice how the X positive direction is going to the left. I want to rotate it around so that X positive is going to the right. So I'm going to grab onto the gnomon, rotate 180 degrees, and then confirm by pressing enter. So there's my connection, and I'll give my connection a name. And then I'll press OK to confirm. So now you can see my top left connection down here. And now I'm going to follow the exact same steps to do the remaining three connections. So now I have all four connections defined under my workpiece side connections, and I can press OK to confirm. So now in the assembly tree, we can see these four connections available that we can connect holders to. So top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. So now I'm going to go through and define the holders. So let's do the top left one first. This is going to be mostly the same as everything that we've done up until this point. So I'm going to do the holder. I'll select from the graphics view. And I'm going to select the top left holder. I'll define the machine side connection. Press enter to confirm. And then I'll confirm that the holder is good. So now under the holder, I want to define the insert. I'll select it from the graphics view. The 
cutting plane in this case is going to be the top plane. And the offset, we are going to need an offset here because we have this distance right here. So I'm going to select here for offset. And then I'm going to select a point somewhere on the edge of the radius. We're going to need to play with this boundary later on, but for now, we're just going to leave it as is. I'll finish off defining the insert, just as we have in all the other tutorials. So now I want to define my second holder. I'm going to scroll down to bottom left. I'll right click and choose define a component. Again, all the same steps. So now when we get down to this setup page, we have a new option here that's red that's telling us we need to define something. So in our case, for this type of holder, the angle here is going to be zero. You can see by the graphic that this would be the angle for the spindle orient on a mill turn style machine, where we have a holder like you see in the graphic there. We don't have any rotary axis, so we're just going to use uh, zero degrees, no rotation. We do need to define an offset here, so I'm going to select that offset because that's going to be our insert down here. And now we get down to this boundary section. So you can see at this point, if you look closely, that we sort of have the insert above is being overlaid down to our boundary. You can see that blue outline there. So because this insert is not the active cutting definition, it is seen as part of the holder. So for a tool like this, where we're going to use a Y axis to offset between the two tools, we need to use this boundary to let Mastercam know that for this cutting definition, we don't want to look at this holder as part of the boundary. It will still be checked for collisions in Verify, but we don't want to use this as part of the holder when we're actually calculating the toolpath. So I'm going to click here on this Adjust button. And it looks like I have a section view enabled, so I'm just going to disable that section view. And here we can see what Mastercam is looking at for the boundary. Everything between these two planes is being taken as the boundary. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab this upper handle and I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to snap it to the midpoint right here. I'll snap it to there, click. And now we're just looking at this portion of the holder and I'll press enter to confirm. And now we can see that our boundary has updated. We're only looking at this insert and not the one above. So I'll go through and finish off defining the holder. And now our cutting definition is fully defined. One thing that we're going to have to do, because this holder was not yet defined when we defined the upper holder, we're going to need to go back and edit the boundary for this holder. So I'm going to scroll up here to the first cutting definition, and then I will right click on the cutting definition and choose edit. And then I'm going to go down to the boundary page and we'll use that adjust boundary to modify our boundary to what we want. So this time I'm going to grab the bottom handle 
and then drag it up to the midpoint here. So now I'm only looking at the upper section. And I'll press enter to confirm. And then I'll press check mark to confirm. So now we have the upper cutting definition and the lower cutting definition. I'm not going to bother with the other two cutting definitions at this time. We have enough defined that we can try testing out our tool. So I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to save our tool to the library. So now I'll turn on my level with the part and I'll hide my level with the holder. And let's create a toolpath. So I'm going to choose the finish toolpath. So you'll notice that we have this new symbol on the top left of our holder here. It looks like it has like some inserts. So this is telling us that we have multiple cutting definitions for this tool and we can select whichever one we want to use. So I'm just going to select the tool and do OK and we'll see what our toolpath looks like. So here's using the upper cutting definition. And now let's switch to the lower. So I'll hit escape to exit back plot. And now I'm going to go into the toolpath parameters, right click on the tool and choose select insert cutting definition. I'm going to scroll down to the second holder. I'll select that cutting definition and then press OK. And then I'll press OK again. Regenerate the toolpath. And now we're using that roughing tool. So that's it for video number five in the 3D Lathe Tool series. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing or dropping a like. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, then you can leave a comment below. And in the next episode, we're going to look at how to create tools for Milturn and B-axis machines.